All right. Factory polynomials when. There are three conditions that are when we use this work or this direction set to factor. On Thursday, we will get a new one uh, that has a different set of criteria that's um, slightly shifted. So first, today, we're looking at, we factor quadratics or polynomials this way when the degree is two. Meaning it is a quadratic. Remember those names that we came up with for them? Here is my degree of two that makes this something we're going to be able to do. This will come in that pin over there. The second factor that makes this possible to follow this set of um, steps is the number of terms is three. Meaning it's a trinomial. Notice here, one, two, three terms. And the final criteria to be able to use this set of steps is the coefficient. This is a really long explanation, but I'll show you what it means really quickly in a sec. The coefficient of the squared term is 1. That means when we look at this leading term that's squared, there's nothing in front of it because it's an invisible one. Take a look at the worksheet that got passed out to you for this as well. I chose it specifically for today because it had nothing in front of that leading term. <clears throat> All right, so steps to factoring success. Let's draw the steps out or write them in, and then we're going to use them to go through factoring. Right now, this is multiplied out into a trinomial, quadratic trinomial. What we want to do is get it back to this version where we've got two sets of parentheses being multiplied. So our answer for this is going to have two sets of parentheses multiplied times each other. That's what our steps are going to lead us to. Our goal is to get it into the other form. So our step one is draw the parentheses. And fill in the variable. Our variable is x. We've got x squared here and a constant times x, so b x here. So we're going to put an x here and an x here. I'm sorry for those of you who don't write tiny. This is a really, this is a lot to fit into the step two space. 
One of these days I will undo this PDF into some form and make this box bigger. All right, so in the X puzzle, that's what this is here. This is an X puzzle and I'm gonna show you how to fill it out in a moment. In the X puzzle, we're gonna place our B in the addition spot. And our C in the multiplication spot. Let's call this. Uh huh. You know this already, Matthew. Your mom. I'll get this onto um, YouTube or YouTube at the classroom later. Okay. All right, so what does that mean? I'm going to use one color for B. This is the addition spot of our X puzzle. It will make sense as we keep going, just trust me. <clears throat> This is our C. It's going to go in our multiplication spot. I'm going to take us back to this table here. This is our addition. We added these like terms. And this is our multiplication. You'll see what I mean as we continue with this, but there's much you already know to be able to have this make sense to you, that as we continue with these steps, trust me, you're gonna be like, okay, I get it now. But I know right now we're at the, I'm sorry, you have to trust me spot. All right, step three, we have to ask ourselves a question here. What will the signs be? We're either going to have two additions, two subtractions, or an addition and a subtraction. When we're asking that, we're thinking about in these parentheses, looking at this problem, We've got a plus here and a plus here. What do you think is going to be the signs in these parentheses then? They're probably both going to be positive. Taking a look back at our example here, we had a negative here and a positive here that ended up giving us a negative here and there's a negative here. So this one ends up giving us one negative and one positive. You'll get more familiar with this as we keep going. I promise. Number four, we're gonna solve the X puzzle. and put the answers in the parentheses. And then finally, we're going to check our work. With the box.
Okay, I don't want to go on with the example until we're caught up. Are we ready? Okay. Let's write an example down here. I'm going to try to make this all in sight at the same time. Let's do x squared plus 4x plus 3. I want you to make an X puzzle big enough to do a little writing in. The first thing we're going to do is take the number that's a B and put it down in this box. Dan, your new seat is right here at this spot. But Matthew just left, so it's really the three of you. But here's your stuff over here. And then up here, we're going to put the number that's in the C spot, which is three. If you remember, this is what we're adding, and this is what we're multiplying. What we want to put here are two numbers that when I add them together, I get four, and when I multiply them together, I get three. When I add three and one, do I get four? When I multiply three and one, do I get three? Then that means that this works. And I jumped ahead. I did not draw my parentheses. So my first step should have been to draw the parentheses. My second step should have been putting the these in after filling in the variable. Are these going to both be positive or negative or one of each? They're going to both be positive, and we're going to fill in our answers. And this would be the solution of what we're looking for. But we're going to first multiply it and check. Because that's what number five says. We're going to check our work with a box. Does it work when I multiply out what I found? I end up with x squared. 3x and 1x is 4x and 3. So let's try that with some other problems. We're going to start with number one. The first thing we want to do is draw our parentheses. And fill in our variable, which in this case is x and x. We're going to draw our x puzzle here. We're going to take our number that's added and put it in the base of the x. And we're going to take our number that's multiplied and put it up here. And now to solve our x puzzle, we have to think about what are two numbers that when I add them together, I get negative 7. But when I multiply them, I get negative 18. And the way I start thinking about this is I start thinking of what are the factors of 18? 
I could get 18 by doing 3 times 6, 1 times 18. What else? I heard it 2 times 9. Now I'm noticing when I multiply them, I'm getting a negative 18. That means one of these numbers has to be positive and the other has to be negative because I only get a negative when I multiply a positive and a negative, right? So one of these has to be negative and one of these has to be positive. Is it three and six? If I add three and six together, is there any way I can make one positive and one negative and get seven? Which of these are seven away from each other? Melody? And which of those has to be the negative if when I add them together, I get negative seven? I think it's gonna be the nine. Because if I do negative nine and positive two, when I add them, do I get negative seven? Who understands what I did here to find this? I put up above it the factors because this number is here because we multiplied it. So I didn't quite do a guess and check, but I just kind of wrote out the things that I know that make this number, thinking in my head the whole time, one of these is going to have to be negative and one of them is going to have to be positive. Why did I decide it was 9 is negative? Because this 7 is here. If the 2 was positive, or the negative, and the 9 was um, positive, this would have been a positive 7. Right? So we check our work by putting our box in. This right here is the one that if I'd done this the wrong way, it would be showing up right now. And we're ending up with x minus 9 times x plus 2 is equivalent to x squared minus 7x minus 18. Because I found this term is this one, these two together are this one, and this one is here.